Country Club here in Boynton Beach, Florida, and my name is Nancy Stewart. I'm with the Dialogue Golf Academy. I have a few questions for you this morning. Are you tired of hitting and hoping that you know where your golf ball is going to go when you get up to the tee box? Are you totally frustrated and ready to quit the game because your ball is slicing into the other fairway or hooking into the water? How would you like to take total control of your golf shot on command at all times? kind of thought that's why you came here today. So we're going to talk about the release of the golf club, controlling the club face, and the, that eventually controlling the direction your golf ball flies. Before we do that, though, we're going to have to talk about Golf 101 and the grip. So a little refresher for you on the golf club itself. The entire thing is a golf club, just so we're on the same page. This is the club head. Toe of the golf club here. Club face where we're going to strike the ball heel of the club, shaft, and grip. With your right hand on the, toe, on the shaft, the toe of the club will be straight up in the sky. That's very important because if we went one degree with that toe, not quite up at 90, up towards the sky, one degree is going to send that ball off 17 yards to the right or 17 yards to the left. So if you're ever wondering, you know, why is it really going that far right or that far left, got a lot to do with how your hands are sitting on this golf club. So, when that toe is up in the sky, this will be the top of the golf club. This will be the front of the golf club closest to the target, the back side of the golf club, and the bottom. What you can do as a training aid, you take a pen, take a sharpie, it's, very, it's a very effective tool. I've already drawn it on here, but take this sharpie Put a little B on there for the bottom of the golf club. It's going to go on the club first. F for front of the golf club going on the club second. And T for top of the golf club going on the club lastly for this hand. And then on your right hand, you've got two Bs for the bottom of the golf club. This lifeline is going to be covering up your left thumb. Be careful. These Sharpies will get on your clubs. Right hand on top of the club. like that. A lot of times what happens is if it's sitting up on that heel pad, it's going to slip. And then again, what are we trying to gain today? We're trying to gain control of that club face so we can control the release of the ball and we can control the face of the club to hit the golf ball where we want it to go. Alright, so your checkpoint, last three fingers are off. This index pad is pushing up with a force. The heel pad is pushing down with a force, locking that club. I can't even get this out of my own hand. In fact, if I turn that upside down, put it on the bumper of a car, put the car in neutral, and pulled, I'd be able to pull that car. Because I have two opposing forces again, a heel pad pushing down, and the index pad pushing up. So one, two, three. It's going to feel pretty robotic at first, but again, our only connection to that club face is through this grip and this hand. Two Bs go on from the bottom of that golf club. The lifeline again covers up the left thumb. Now, what does that allow us to do? It allows us to hinge that club properly, unhinge it, rehinge it. What you may want to do to make sure you have the proper amount of tension is push your hands out, pull them in. Push them out. A lot of times you get too much tension in your shoulders. You're like this all day. You're real tight. Okay? Another thing you may want to do is just draw a vertical figure eight. What do you feel? Do you feel more of the grip? Well, then your grip pressure is too tight. Do you feel more of the shaft? Well, you still have some work to do. You've got to be able to feel and sense where that club head is because what we're really trying to do is paint pictures with the toe of that golf club releasing through impact, causing that ball to have a nice little drop. Remember, we're here today because we're trying to get rid of that pulling motion where the heel will come through first and slice the ball the other way, away, or that hooking motion where that toe is going to slide around that left side of the shoulder there and go into the water on the left. We don't want either one of those. We want to get rid of both of those because we want to have a lot more fun. We want to have a lot more control. And we don't want to quit the game, and we don't want to be frustrated. So have you ever taken a wet towel and tried to snap your buddy? I know I have two sisters, and doing dishes, we did this quite a bit in the kitchen, so maybe that's where I learned how to play golf. It hurts. It snaps. You notice what's happening here? The wrist isn't, it's not traveling very far, but that towel 
and that wet towel in particular is going to snap and hit your leg and it's going to hurt you. Now, nine times out of ten, if your ball's going to the right or if your ball's going way left, you're probably doing that through impact. There's no snap. You don't see any kind of motion. All right, so we want to get rid of that and get that. Nice little drill you can do. Just kind of makes it a little bit more relatable, I guess. So, again, we've got this grip on there properly. What's that going to do for us? Hinge it, unhinge it, rotate it, and rehinge it. Looking for that same snap we had with that towel. You hear that club head speed? You see that nice little draw on that ball? There's the energy efficiency we're after. There's the control we're after. And again, there's the playability, sustainability in the game, and you won't want to quit after the 10th hole. Have a little drill for you today. With your feet together, and that will deactivate your lower body because you're not looking for power at this point in time. You're looking for club face control. Again, hands, excuse me, hands controlling club face, club face telling the ball where to go. Left hand on the club, right hand on the left forearm. You're going to hinge that club. Everything hinges out of here, a little snuff box. Everything rotates out of the left forearm muscle. You're going to unhinge it. Face is open, so now we have to add the forearm rotation back to a straight face in line with our target or square, what we call perpendicular to the target line. And then we have to rehinge it back up over our front shoulder. So it's up, it's down, it's rotated, and it's up again. Or it's hinged, unhinged, rotated, rehinged, or another way, one, two, three, four, if that works for you. This is going to start to burn in this forearm muscle, so go ahead and now change it over to your right hand. Same thing. We're going to activate these muscles in the forearms and these little hingers. One, two, three, four, up, down, rotate, and up, or hinge, unhinge, rotate, and rehinge. What's that going to do for us? It's going to give us that nice release that we're looking for when we get to the actual golf course and do our golf swing. We're going to have a lot more fun. We're going to have a lot more control. And you can do this drill whether you're in your backyard, whether you're in the living room, or whether you're on the driving range. But try and get in the habit of doing it. And they say, you know, 21 days to create a new habit. So if you can only do three minutes the first time with each, each arm, that's fine. But work up to five minutes per day, and you're going to see a lot straighter golf shots. You're going to have a lot more curving direction on your ball, and you're definitely going to get rid of that slice and that hook. So that's your tip for today. You make it a great day. Thank you.